as they say in the Old West, it's time to grab your guns for the 2025 Hypervisor Shootout. In this video, I'm checking out my top five hypervisors to create virtual machines in 2025 and to show you how you can create them, including a Windows 11 machine for free. Check it out. <music> This video is sponsored by Robopack, the trend-setting solution for Intune packaging and third-party patch management, and it's free for SMBs and NGOs. Visit them today at Robopack. Com. Greetings fellow tubers and welcome to the channel. Today's episode, we're going to discuss hypervisors and specifically, I'm going to talk about my top five hypervisors, many of which are free, all of which can help you create virtual machines for training as well as production environments. But which one will come out on top? Hmm. Let's wait and find out. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, bump that button up there, ring that bell, and come and join my learning community. And if you'd like more, why not consider signing up to my Patreon site just here. Uh, here, you'll get access to full Microsoft courses, monthly Zoom calls, and more. I look forward to welcoming you there. So I think without any further ado, let's jump in and take a look at my top five hypervisors for 2025. And if you've got questions and comments, get them down below. I love those. Enjoy. Coming in at number five for my free products is Oracle's Virtual Box. This has been around for many years and now Oracle has taken it on. It's pretty good. You can add uh, previously created machines. You can go in and as you can see, you can build a new virtual machine here as well. Um, the support for OSs are a little bit limited. You've got Linux and you've got other, which of course is probably Windows. Um, this particular version is running on an ARM processor here. So there are kind of limitations that you can do uh, with that. So watch out for that. The other thing is it's also looking for ISO images as well. And as you can see here, here is one that I've made previously. This is a Kali Linux box. The, one of the issues that I've had with um, Oracle Virtual Box is it's a little bit unstable and it's a case of, you know, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Um, so number five, it's absolutely free. Give it a try um, and let me know how you get on. Okay, coming in at number four of the hypervisors for virtual machines is Hyper-V. This can normally be found in Windows Server and or Windows 10 and 11. Uh, you need to add the role in. And as you can see here, I've got Hyper-V Hyper already installed, but you can install it as a role-based feature and choose the machine that you want to install it on. Simply click on next, select the Hyper-V role, and then essentially just click install. And it's as simple as that. Um, to use the machine, simply come into tools and I'm gonna come down into Hyper-V Manager here. So in Hyper-V Manager, you can see that I've got a number of virtual machines here, so easily laid out. Uh, these uh, Hyper-V, by the way, supports both Linux and Windows virtual machines. And you can see that I've got one running here. Um, to manage the machines, you can see that you also have a left, uh, sorry, a right-hand side menu here. And this allows you to view the settings. You can edit the disk settings. You can stop and restart the services. You can connect to a virtual machine and so on. In addition, you can create a new virtual machine, new hard disk, new network, and you can give the machine a name. So in this case, I'm just going to call this my uh, LON dash SRV1 for London server. I can also st store the virtual machine in a different location. I'm going to just accept the defaults here. Click on next. Is it a generation one or a generation two hypervisor? Generation one tends to be the older 32, 64 bit versions, whereas generation two is kind of next generation 64 bit virtual machines, for example, uh, Windows 11. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Of course, you can give it an amount of 
memory that you want the virtual machine to have. So in this case, I'm going to simply create uh, two gigs of RAM. But one really useful feature that this hypervisor has is that you can use something called dynamic memory, which is awesome. Again, you can choose the connection. So is it going to be not connected? Um, an external network for the internet. I'm using a VM here, so you can see I've got a little note that says don't use that, or it can just be internal. This is great for training purposes. So I can then attach a hard drive, so I can create a new hard disk. The default size is 127 gig here. You can also attach it to a, a, an additional hard disk, or even a physical disk, and we call this a pass-through disk. I can then choose to install the OS or not. I'm going to click on finish, and you can now see that this has indeed created the virtual machine. I would now go into and start that virtual machine up, and I would then need to install an OS from an ISO image. For example, Windows 11, Windows Server, or whatever. But in terms of managing the uh, Hyper-V machine, super easy. I can simply just connect to the virtual machine. In this case, this is my domain controller. You can see that you've got options at the top, nice little toolbar. You can stop, start, reset the virtual machine. You can pause it. Um, so everything is really, really simple to use here. Now, in addition, you've also got the Control Alt Delete, and you can see that Control Alt and End would be the key system that you can use here. So I can simply hit that, and I can stick in my password, of course, and then I get full access to the virtual machine. Now, of course, VMs are fantastic for not just uh, training purposes, but also for operational purposes as well. Hyper-V is, of course, one of the founding technologies that makes Microsoft Azure uh, possible. So before we continue, just a quick message from this week's sponsor, Robopack. Today's video is brought to you by Robopack, the trend-setting solution for Intune packaging and automated patch management. Explore what's making waves in the industry and claim your free trial at robopack.com. Plus, did you know that Robopack is free for small companies and NGOs? Experience it firsthand today at robopack.com. So coming in at my number three is a free product. So this is VMware Fusion. Now, if you're on a PC, um, you would need to get VMware Workstation Pro, which again is absolutely free for individuals, um, as is VMware Fusion, and it's pretty good. It's got a really nice range of virtual machines. Um, so the latest version of Windows, various versions of Linux, as well as a few other versions uh, of software there as well. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to continue. I'm going to create this. I'm going to accept the UEFI boot, uh, which is fine for Windows 11. And I can put in a encryption key. Of course, Windows encrypts everything with BitLocker. Um, so uh, again, I can go ahead for additional security and put in an encryption key there as well. So once you've done that, simply going to click on continue and we'll then create the virtual machine. Um, so do I want to create a new virtual disk or use an existing one? Uh, again, what is the guest operating system and 64 uh, gigs in size there. You can also customize the various settings here as well if you want to. For example, the, you know, saving it as a different name. You can put some search tags on here and you can also uh, change the uh, directory. So once you've created the virtual machine, we'll need to then obviously do some configuration and you can go in, you can make some notes and you can also choose whether to start the virtual machine automatically out of the box. I'm going to, again, just come up here and you can see you've got various options at the top here. So starting, stopping the VM and managing, managing the virtual machine. At the moment, of course, there's nothing running on this virtual machine. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to go off and we'll get a copy of Windows 11. Now, you've got two choices. Do you want to download a copy 
from Microsoft. So just like many different hypervisors, it will connect to the Microsoft Download Center and it can actually download a copy. However, in this case, I've actually got a, a pre-downloaded copy already. And so what I'm gonna do is just walk through some of these settings just first with you. So as you can see, you can configure all aspects of the virtual machine here. You can configure the keyboard, the encryption settings, the network adapter settings here. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna click on the DVD and I'm going to either create or connect to an ISO image. This is one I've pre-downloaded. This is a Windows 11 um, uh, ISO image here. I'm just going to, once I've got that, I'm going to click on next. And now that I've got my ISO image set up, I'm just going to accept that. There are some advanced options that you can go into, but for the purpose of this, I'm simply going to say connect to the CD and DVD image. Now, all I need to do, of course, is start the virtual machine. And like any version of Windows, just press the space bar or any key, and it will now start the installation. Now, I'm not going to cover that installation here. I'll cover that in a, in a future video. But for now, a few minutes goes by and you can see that Windows has now installed. It would be great if it installed this quickly. So there we have it. We have a full copy of Windows 11. Now, a little caveat here, uh, unlike some other virtualization software, you'll need to go in and you'll need to add some additional drivers, of course, for any kind of hard, special hardware that you've got. But in this case, it's a really useful tool. Uh, you'll notice that we don't have a connectivity to the internet. The reason for that is you need to install the VMware tools. So to do that, we simply come up to the menu at the top and we click on to install those VMware tools and we will then have access to all of our display, network drivers, and so on. Uh, really good, and it's extremely fast. And uh, it will automatically play. So again, I'm just going to say, yep, yeah, I want to install those tools. Of course, you accept any kind of license. You'll need to run it in an elevated prompt, as you noticed, because it needs admin privileges there. So we just quickly, next, next, next. I'm just going to do a complete install of course, you can customize it as well if you want to. So again, within seconds, it goes ahead and it installs those VMware tools. Once it's done that, you'll notice that it starts suddenly behaving a little bit different. In other words, you'll now see the display will flash and it will change a couple of times. Don't worry if it looks a little bit like this. You know, you've maybe you're thinking, oh my goodness, I've not got the correct resolution. Don't worry, this actually readjusts itself. So again, what we'll do is just quickly restart this virtual machine. And there you have it. You can see I can go up to the menu. I can do a control alt delete. There's also a key sequence. Put in my password for this here. Because we've got the VMware tools on this now, what that means is we don't have to continually look at this kind of low resolution. We can now go into full screen mode. And of course, we've now got internet access. And because we've got internet access and you can basically use it on your own machine. You can see now we've got full screen. It looks fantastic. It really does. Um, I can now go in, let's say to Chrome or Edge rather, I should say. And again, if I just open up the internet, you'll see that we've got full internet access. Now, if you've got Windows, let's say, or Microsoft 365, and you wanted to join this virtual machine to Microsoft 365, then of course you can do that. So absolutely awesome there. So coming in at my number two is Parallels. Now Parallels is super simple, very, very easy to use, especially if you're a Mac user. Now, the only downside is it costs around £99 per year. Um, but again, it's definitely worth 
um, the output. So you can see here, just like the other virtual machines, I can go in, I can customize it. I can configure the settings, super easy to use. And in terms of actually running it again, you can see that it's uh, just very, very similar. And that's the nice thing about virtualization software, by the way, is once you start working with one, it's very easy to transition to another product like Citrix or uh, Microsoft or one of those. They're, they're all kind of very similar and they all have their own unique features. One unique feature that I'm, I'm happy to say that Parallels has got is the fact that you can actually install Mac OS in a virtual machine, which is really nice actually. Um, so again, as you can see, I'm just going to fire up that Windows 11 machine here. And just like before, again, it's very, very seamless. Windows comes in. I'm using my shared logon and I'm also integrating this in with Microsoft 365. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of anything that I'm doing in 365, I will have access to all my documents, all my settings. And of course, just as the other Windows uh, machine as well, this can also be a member of Microsoft 365 and it can be managed in Intune as well. And as you can see here, I can simply come up to the menu. I can create a new virtual machine. Do I want to create one with Windows? But check it out. I can do that Mac OS as well. And that has got to be worth its weight in gold, especially if you want to kind of practice and create like a lab environment. But it's also got a pretty good range of uh, third party VMs there as well. Now, my number one solution is and one of my personal favorites is this. This is UTM. I love this because look at what you've got access to. You've got access to not just Windows 11, but also previous versions of Windows, Linux and others as well. In addition, you can simply very similar. You can create a virtual machine uh, using a standard hypervisor or if the hypervisor doesn't support the architecture, you can emulate it. This is a little bit slower, but again, the fact is that it actually works. Again, I'm just going to go ahead with my Windows 11 install. So just the same, you can see it's picked up the image. Um, it will then ask me, hey, where is the image disk? So I'm just pointing to the ISO here. And then once I've picked out that, it will then ask me, okay, what, how much memory, disk space, and so on are you going to use? Now, um, just to say that when you install the tools, there is an agent also installs at the same time. And you can see that it's the spice tools and those spice tools are installed onto the Windows machine. And these obviously are the drivers and these will basically enhance your graphics and audio and things like that. So when I'm coming here, just give the machine a name. I don't need to change any of the settings. I'm using the same settings that I've used in the other demos, but you can see it's really quick. So again, all I do is just click onto that, open that up. And again, what I'm doing is I'm just simply going in, starting the image, pressing the space bar or any key, and then the Windows 11 machine will actually go ahead and kick off. Now, um, just to say that any other version of Windows that you're using, it's a very similar experience. So if you're using Windows 7, 10, 11, and so on, um, the experience is pretty much the same. You'll get exactly the same wizard. Once you install the Spice tools, and it's all in the documentation, and there's some great help uh, files on there as well. In this particular demo, I've just cut through the uh, install of Windows. Obviously, this can take about 15 minutes, but you can see here it's just taking a couple of minutes just purely because I've forwarded my uh, demo a little bit there. But just to say that once it's complete, you will have a fully working version of Windows. And there you have it for free on, on a uh, ARM processor running on a Mac OS. So there you have it, my top five hypervisors uh, for 2025. Uh, do you agree with the list? Would have you included something else? I would love to know. Make sure you get that down in the comments below. 
Big thanks to Robopack for sponsoring this week's episode. Really do appreciate it. Definitely check out their goodies at robopack.com. Uh, super cool uh, set of tools, by the way, for Microsoft Intune and software deployment. That's it for this week. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll catch you next time. Stay safe.